microphone. What's going on, team? Um, welcome back to the Listen Whilst We Step podcast. And this is the uh, first episode in a little little while. Um, I've been a little bit busy doing other stuff, but I thought I would. we were going to have the boys on themselves, but now it's just me and Kev because I'm going to call Alex out straight here in the start of it. He decided to not turn up. So be an interesting one, but it's going to be an, an epic episode. We're going to kind of look back some of the lessons, the failures, the wins, the... Uh, interesting parts of uh, 2021 and just kind of give a little bit of an insight of kind of exactly what we're doing what's going on but i'm joined with the man himself mr kevin duffy do you want to give a little bit of an intro to yourself yeah we'll keep it super short and sweet because the the old fitness intros intros are yeah they're overplayed but uh i know you through uh, through meeting in dubai and uh we are very very similar in the same sense that we're in the same industry um basically built a very very similar lifestyle for ourselves uh in terms of the fact that we've got an online business and planning on doing a little bit of traveling next year if you want to check a little bit my background check me out at recomp underscore online that's about as much of an intro that i'm going to give like i'm good at getting people in shape there's nothing massively amazing to, to kind of spiel about that but uh yeah i'm looking forward to this one mate a bit of a deep dive into some 2021 reflections and let's call Alex out for this, actually. This is supposed to be a 6 post chat. There's supposed to be three guys on this, and uh, your man has absolutely stood us up on a Wednesday morning. I'm going to start to dry in the deep end. We were literally just, thought before we started recording, we were literally sat here for about 20 minutes going, is he joining? Is he joining? Is he not joining? But he's not here. Um, so, mate, I, I'm interested kind of just a deep dive. I think we just get straight into things and don't fanny around with this. I want to know what would you say were kind of like some of the biggest wins that you've had in the last year or so? Like it, it's been a roller coaster for us both to say the least. If we kind of look back from pretty much a year since we first met, it's been crazy. Yeah, it's mad. I mean, I suppose there's probably quite a different, there's a lot of different categories to, to start to kind of unpack in terms of like wins, losses and learns, you know, um, it's a weird way to say that, but wins, losses, and lessons, I suppose. Um, I, I, I have no idea where this conversation is going to go off the back of that, but there's been some good lessons, some great lessons in terms of like insights to 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 really set up for a big 2022. But there's also been some hard pills to swallow in terms of learning some of my own limits, learning some of my own flaws in terms of my personality, which is actually some of the best lessons that I am actually taking forward into 2022 is to now understand myself a little bit better so that I can then start to push and build, um, you know, even bigger. But this sounds ridiculous, but one of the biggest lessons that I've actually learned from uh, from 2021 is that basically a, a goal without a plan is just a wish, right? And uh, that sounds really wanky. It sounds like a quote that you'd put on, on some... Uh, <laughs> Some uh, some soccer mum's wall on our kitchen, you know, like what, love, love, life, life, or something like that. Yeah, hundred percent. But like, I go with it. A plan is just a wish, right? That's something that's really sunk in for me because, like, at this time, this time of the year is is the time where a lot of people do like a lot of reflection. You know, can maybe set some New Year's resolutions, and like this has been really kind of eaten up, like month after month after month. This year is that that. I'll set certain goals and sometimes you achieve them. Majority of the time I actually do achieve what I kind of set out to do. But when I was looking at a resolutions list, like every single year I set some sort of fitness goal and every single year I achieve it, right? But there's other goals on that list that are nothing to do with fitness that sometimes I've achieved and sometimes I've not. And I was kind of like trying to figure out why that was. And the reality is like, I'm really good at, creating plans for achieving fitness goals it's what I do you know it's what I help other people do and I was looking at it and I was like well why had not why had these other goals not been ticked off and I was like well actually because I'm not the best at creating financial plans or I'm not the best at creating personal like growth plans that's not my thing you know um so therefore when I was looking at that I was like right well actually what is it that allows me to be really good at creating fitness plans is can actually boil it right back down to the actionable inputs that a person has to take you know like I understand the, the kind of the day-to-day -day tasks that a person has to take to be able to reach that end goal of what they're looking for regardless of what that goal is within fitness like it, it can you know it can be <laughs> drag yourself through a marathon 
<laughs> it can uh, it can be squat a certain amount or it can be getting photo shoot condition you know I like all of these kind of things like I can understand how to, how to break it down into what you need to do today and how to put a few things in place to stop the things that would start with you like that's what I'm good at but then I'm maybe not as good at doing that with say saving for a mortgage you know or like whatever it is or understanding how to take some downtime you know and, and, and kind of save your own energy these type of things like I was looking at that kind of resolutions list that I was making for this year and I was like right who do I need to get to help me to actually tick these off and who who can create a better plan than than I could create for myself for these so that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is kind of like whenever I'm going to set some a bigger goal is that I'm going to have to create that plan and if I can't create a plan that's good enough for that I'm going to outsource it and get somebody else to help me create that plan 100% and this is this is where I think we're quite different in some ways because I almost go the other way I'll put goals in place I will then map out how I'm going to do it but sometimes I will do it in too much detail give myself like basically just overwhelm myself thinking I, it's going to be too difficult I'll give myself too much work and then I just kind of overanalyze I'll analyze it I'm like, oh fuck me I can't do that <laughs> and I just end up yeah. literally getting in my own way um but it is it's amazing how many people set these goals and say I'm going to achieve this but they either don't know how to do it or they don't even start and I think yeah. we're, we're almost kind of on, on opposite ends of the spectrum there, but it's so nice that we both kind of have the self-awareness to now realise like you need to put a bit more of a plan in place and kind of have those people there in other aspects of your life. Use that kind of boardroom that Kieran talks about. Then I know like for me, like one of the biggest things that served me this year is just speed of implementation. Like yeah. I know if I overthink something or I don't literally do it now, I won't do it. So yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, massive. It's funny actually, off the back of that, there's... I've learned both sides of that this year. Um, so speed of implementation in terms of like, take the first step right now. Sometimes that's just calling myself out. A little bit of external accountability, so sometimes to yourself, you know, I'll drop something in the group, be like, this will be done by this time, um, letting you know. Other times it's actually actioning what you're supposed to be doing. But I've also learned the opposite of that. And it was something that we were kind of chatting about the other day in terms of one of the upgrades that I'm bringing in to, to Recomp as a business is that I've actually held off on on kind of pushing that message forward because i'm like previous kev would have just jumped in like <laughs> two feet and learned to swim and the deep end but i'm like i want it to be as good as what i've got in my head first so actually for me to do that i need to have took the first step to making making it come to fruition but also i need to make sure that by the time it's in the public eye it's good enough you know um so i've learned a little bit of patience of the back end of it which is is a lesson I suppose probably from like October 2019, uh, no, not 19, sorry, uh, October 2020 to maybe March 2021 that I kind of like, that was the bit where I was like maybe just do, juggling too many things that I was trying to upgrade at the time and, and un, not really valuing how long certain things take to actually get right, you know? take twice as long as you think it would and it'll cost you twice as much, three or four times as much as you think it yeah, would. Yeah, fuck it. I was going to say, you're probably being a bit generous or twice as much there, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's huge. I think with that, I think the biggest thing for people is remember that the, the whole phrase, Jack of all trade, master of none. Like what you focus on grows or what you focus on gets better. If you focus on squatting, your squat will get better. If you focus on running, if you actually run, Kev, your run gets better. <laughs> <laughs> Every second Wednesday, mate. Every second Wednesday. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just where you put your time, your energy, your focus, that will progress. And if you do spread that too thin, then exactly like you've said, um, you just won't get the most out of it. But at the same time, if people do have different goals, then the biggest thing is making sure that, okay, what, what's the lowest hanging fruit right now? What's my priority right now? And then set a date that you're going to start the next one or make that initial, like, we, I've got some stuff that I want to be doing. So what I've done now is I've initiated it now, but I know I'm not going to be, implementing it till later because another thing has got to take my priority right now yeah 100 percent, mate and that that's the i think that's one of the biggest things that, I, that i've i've learned with that is like actually don't try and do your 10 things right now is get the ball rolling on all 10 or at least some external accountability in terms of you're clear on when it needs to be done but actually like start knocking them off one at a time you know or at least you something because it's exactly what you said it's like your focus and energy can only really go into 
so much at one time, you know. Um, that's actually, I suppose that kind of brings me actually to one of my second lessons of this year is like learning to embrace my own workflow. Like, <laughs> I mean, you both joke about the, the how many rabbit holes we've been done this year, but like, genuinely, that is the way that I work, you know, um, that my personality is can be quite obsessive when I, when I kind of, you know, my dog, dog with a bone, but um, like when I actually start on something, like I'll just go right into it as much as I possibly can. And, that is a double-edged sword because it it means there's a lot of easy progress to be mined because I'm putting more hours, more focus, more energy into a certain thing. But I've also realized the other side of it is that actually you can very, very quickly get lost in a certain thing, or you can also, I hate the term, but burn out, you know, like you can, you can essentially start to drain your own resources that takes away from other things that you should and should like be doing at that time, you know? Um, so I think one of the biggest ones is that, like biggest learn lessons for me kind of going forward is actually I now understand my own workflow. So these periods of like really like I, I would say almost flow state, like easy work because I'm intrigued and, and, and interested in, in upgrading a certain thing is like I've learned to embrace that. But for me to be able to sustain that, there has to be periods of me switching on to something else that recharges me, you know. Um, and like there's always been these like things out there it's like oh you need to take some downtime you need to rest and, and like I've never bonded with that at all like I really couldn't uh, I just I couldn't see my master being able to take some time off for the sake of taking time off that was something that Kieran kind of clicked to me it's like you you just don't for anybody listening to this Kieran from Total Mental Performance absolutely genius when it comes to understanding uh, yourself but the one of the biggest kind of things that he he got me to do is understand the way that I de-stress and that is to switch on to something that's energizing for me or, or, or kind of decompressing for me um, and it makes so much sense because like training is a de-stressor for me but previous to finding training I used to draw and that's something that like you have to be absorbed with like you, you have to be present with you know um, and it sounds ridiculous but uh, when I was in Dubai I think it was like March or something I was chatting to him about it and uh, he's like dude you've got a lot on he's like find something that you can switch on to. So I bought a sketchbook and I bought a skateboard. <laughs> I still can't skateboard. I'm absolutely shit at it. But see, for that month of me just like fucking about on the skateboard, it was class because you genuinely can't be anywhere else but doing that for that time. And, you know, when you come over, I think, was was it May? Like, so you came over in May and, and we built in this like kind of 60 minute period of just going into the sea in Dubai. And like most of the time <laughs> floating about you know but most of the time like we've done nothing other than just float you know and the amount of energy that that gave you back because like we were just shooting the shit you know and taking that little bit to decompress like 10 minutes of your day to, to be able to decompress and re-energize is a massive thing for people that can't switch off you need to switch on to something you know a task that that allows you to not be feeling like you're giving your energy to something else you know because like for me one of those is golf and we played in lisbon obviously we said like the, this year kev's going to try and become I'm a semi-professional golfer <laughs> i am in mate i am in but just call me tiger steel <laughs> love it um but i think that for anyone it's just finding what you can do that with it could be it could be playing chess for someone it could be it could be watching netflix for someone it could be just going for a walk whatever it is that you can kind of find that you actually recharge with um some people just going out with friends and able to shoot the shit that will recharge them. some people will need alone time where they literally just sit in a room and chill and watch netflix on their own or just scroll for instagram whatever it might be it's about finding that thing for you um and it can't it's never going to be the same for everyone um Obviously, we, we've now gone down so many rabbit holes. Like for those, for those people who don't know, me and Kev went to Lisbon, we ran the marathon. I literally just thought it'd be a great idea to get yourself and Lewis on to do a bit of a marathon recap. Um, I'm sure. But we but one lesson is to actually train for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, and actually have a accommodations got a kitchen in in the lead up to Fuck, it. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would be ideal. Yeah, mate, I, over nearly a 12 week period, I cooked two meals. The luxury, the luxury of this online lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> someone, someone's going to do it. Someone's going to do it. Um, we're going back to it. Uh, 
we've obviously been down so many rabbit holes. When we were in Lisbon, we obviously booked out that um, boardroom kind of thing. And like for people, like, we literally did like 16 hours, like all in just massive whiteboard going absolutely in. And we knew off the back of that, like how fatigued you were going to be. For you, when you know you've maybe gone too far, you're kind of burning the candle at um, each end. Because this has been one of my biggest like lessons as well. What are some of your warning signs that kind of go, look, Kev, you need to chill out. You need to go and like take some downtime. Yeah. Um, so number one is actually I, I start to notice it in terms of like focus. Like I'm nowhere near as productive. That's probably like the first sign. But even when that's happening, I'm not like I'm definitely a lot better at noticing it now than I used to be. But um, you, you, you know, like I suppose anybody that that prides himself on working hard almost wears that as a badge of honor when you're you know doing more hours and all these kind of things. But it's not necessarily always the best when it's not productive work. But the first thing that I notice is I just don't get as much done. You know, if I set aside 90 minutes when I'm fresh and fired up, like I will get a lot done. Whereas when I'm at that opposite end, when I'm kind of closer to red line and it, I just, you know, what I get done in 90 minutes, I probably could have got done in 20 when I was fresh, you know. Um, so that's probably the first the first kind of sign that I noticed with that. And if I'm starting to get that now and I've got the luxury of it, I will actually take myself away from the work and just be like, right, go for a walk, recharge yourself and then come back to it a little bit more. You know, you get you get more done in, uh, in less time and, and kind of save your energy with it. But then the, the kind of number one thing that I'm like, right, you need to take a break from, from what you're doing just now is actually just how easy I get up in the morning. Like, and, and the the want to have my mind focused on work because that naturally happens for me like I fucking love what I do and if that then starts to become something that I'm like mm, you know like maybe I'll just sleep in a little extra hour you know um rather than get up as, as my standard and use self to get on the laptop and get some work done I'm like right there's an issue here you know um and then physically as well like I've been pushing uh, a little bit. I'm talking about as if I understand all of this. I've been pushing a little bit harder this last month with some of the upgrades that we're bringing in for, for the January start. Um, but I, I see it physically in my skin as well. You know, like it, it actually starts to dry out um, kind of around my cheeks. So that's like, that's generally a telltale sign that I'm, I've been pushing a little bit too far. Um, but yeah, I think the, the kind of first two is, is like, I just don't get as much done. And then I start to, the kind of, the, the flagship one is like, you're not as enthused to get out of your bed in the morning, you know? Um, how about uh, yourself? Yeah, those first two are like literally me to, uh, to an absolute time. Like I'll end up just sat at the laptop. I'll end up like procrastinating, like I'll start follow, scrolling through my phone. I'll be flicking between tabs, just kind of filling space. because, And then it kind of comes links into the next one, which is like that. I hate the word motivation, but it's almost like I have to feel like I'm motivate, I have to motivate myself to do stuff rather than like, yep, let's go. Just actually like genuinely think everything's just clicking and just working. Um, for me, sleep's actually a big one. When my when I'm burning the candle too much and I'm kind of maybe going in a bit too much and need to take some downtime, my sleep goes to shit. Because mm. I start almost just getting in my own head about stuff, thinking, oh, I need to do this, 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 this. Shit, you haven't done that. And it'll wait, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and go to the toilet or something. And my head's going, oh, you need to do that. And I'm like, dude, you shouldn't be waking up at like 3 a.m. thinking you need to do this. Like, that's one of the things I spoke about with Kieran is like, I was sleeping, but I wasn't actually being, like actually getting good rest. Good quality. Yeah, the recovery wasn't there. No, exactly. And then you just end up in this double-edged sword where you're drinking 75 monsters a day and <laughs> becoming, a caffe becoming, a, becoming a caffeine addict. Um, I suppose I, some of this leads into like my, my kind of biggest lesson from this year is just how important environment is. Everyone talks about it, but and this is the first year that I've genuinely learned it. I think because of because of COVID, I think uh, a lot of my environment changed in terms of the people that are in that circle, and it's got smaller and smaller, mm. and smaller which is kind of part and parcel with environment, but also just getting out into the world, not just your office, not just your normal gym, just actually getting into new environments. That stuff gets you excited. When you're excited, you implement more and everything's just more enjoyable. But there's one phrase that I, I'm really liking at the moment. It's just constantly being surrounded by sparring partners. Like how many times have we had conversations and you'll say something, I'll be like, why, why are you going to do that? Or vice versa. And you'll just go, or you'll just go, Simon, slow down. It's, you don't need to do that. It is like, it, it's absolutely no secret that both of us are in a much better position at this point that you're from knowing each other for a full year, you know? Um, and 
like that's something that I'm super super grateful for. It was funny actually. One of the one of the guys that uh, we both know, um, like when I first met you, you you know you met for a group and like you were doing kind of like I think you like it was kind of publicly known that you were doing the best in that current group that we were at, and uh, like we were staying just by pure chance we were staying in the same hotel and we got we got an uber from the from the, from the airport to the to the hotel together and i like i was ready to go to sleep and uh you were like oh some guys messaged me on instagram like we're gonna go and grab a session and i was like oh cool, I'll, I'll get involved like and that's kind of how we we met it was just like shooting the shit we'd done a training session together kind of clicked and and uh you know the rest is history but somebody asked me like did i artificially create like getting to know you because because you were doing well in this group and i was like that that speaks volumes to somebody else's mindset because I was like I could genuinely couldn't give a fuck about how, like how well you were doing financially like it's like the environment side of things for me is about how you make other people feel like and and, and kind of how like that can start to you know as a sparring partner it's like well are you are you a net positive for me or are you a net negative for me and if like that's one of the things that you said your circle's got a little bit smaller this year but it's probably just because you've cut out the net negative and it's it's something that like has, has been massive for myself as well and, and to relate it back to that the, the kind of go the goal with it, a plan thing that I was talking about in terms of training it's very much the same with the environment like I didn't realize that and it's taken me to this year to kind of realize that most of my training progression was done in a powerlifting gym surrounded by people that fucking loved getting stronger. So therefore that was just like one of the highest values at that time. And my entire kind of circle of mates were all focused on getting better at squat bench and deadlift, you know? Um, so therefore I held it in quite a high regard. No fucking wonder that I got so much better at that point than, you know, maybe other years of my training. And it's the same with, with kind of like our now, a little bit smaller but very very helpful circle that we've kind of created ourselves you know it's like actually everybody that I now kind of speak to on a daily slash weekly basis wants to see me do better it's not always been the case you know um and that's not to say that you know we're all fucking like the, the industry's really got a really bad name for this but you know it's not as if we're always kind of screenshotting like pictures of like yeah success you know just sharing memes or anything like that it's just that actually you've got something that's got your back you know and actually that works in both ways because we've both called each other out on stupid shit this year you know um and also given each other some pretty like good nuggets in terms of being like you should probably do this you know um and that's that's one of the things that's kind of really hit home for an environment for me is just being like having a really good network of people that you can kind of like pull that from. For me, the 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 biggest giveaway if someone is genuinely in your corner is if you share a win with them and they are equally as excited as you are. Yeah, yeah, because, massive. Because how how many people like you might think, oh. I managed to squat this, managed to deadlift this. Oh, I hit X, Y, Z. You just share a win. And they're like, yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, that works for me massively. I, I think to, to kind of second that, like to know if somebody's like really, you know, it's not it's not all about what somebody can give you, but, you know, that, that there's a two-way a two street with this, but the kind of bit, the bit, yeah, the, the biggest one for me is like whether somebody can actually call me on my bullshit as well. Like, so I am I can get quite excited and get quite carried away with certain things. So sometimes like somebody that will be like, right, as excited for my wins, but also there to go like, dude, just going to piss on your parade a little bit. There we go. We're back. Two together. I still hate yeah, you. Uh, you what? you froze with an, a great expression on your face, mate. <laughs> That's oh, burning in my retinas. <laughs> I can't wait to look at that one after. And um, you said when someone's not. The last words I got was. Uh, 
uh, pee on my party or something like that. Yeah, so basically, like when when somebody's like willing to be able to piss on your parades, like in a in a good in a good light, you know, it's like one of those ones where they're willing to get behind your wins, like like authentically enthused by you doing well, but they're also willing to call you on it and say like, mm, I don't know if this is good for you, mate, um, or I don't know if this is the right move, even when you're excited about something. And having somebody that's, that's actually willing to do both shows me that they're not just a hype man. You know, they're not just like, yeah, you're, you're doing well, you're doing well, you're doing well. You know, it's like, actually, do you know what? Maybe you should take a step back and look at it from this angle because, um, and that's something I've always kind of valued. Like one of my best mates, James, is that he's willing willing to call me on my own, my own shit. And it's like, that is something that, that keeps you grounded in a good way, but not, not you know, not held back. You know, it's, it's more just like, actually... Dude, <laughs> have a look at it from this way, you know? I think the biggest thing is just not, well, not be surrounded by the yes man or anything like that, but actually just having someone who is just reflects and go, what do you mean by that? Or just explain to me, like, it sounds amazing, but why do you want to do it? Yeah, 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 not, yeah 100%. And that, no, one, no one in that corner who's like that for you would ever completely shut you down unless they generally think it's a terrible idea, but they'll just challenge you and just try and make, they just want to, they want the best for you. I think that's the biggest thing. They want to see yeah. you win. They want to see you succeed as much as they want themselves to succeed. And if, Mass- that, massively. if that means asking some hard questions, they're not afraid to do that at all. Um, so this kind of leads a little bit onto kind of one thing that uh, is one of my next biggest lessons. And actually, we spoke about it in Lisbon. It's just, uh, I suppose it links into the planning as well. It's just how the journey and the process is so much more rewarding, fulfilling, and more important than the outcome. Like I remember, yeah. I remember crossing just to give like a bit of context for the marathon. I remember crossing that finish line and not really feeling any different from what I did if I'd run around the back lanes here in Jersey and I just hit a PV run. It literally felt no different. In fact, it was a bit of an anti-climax if I'm honest. <laughs> um, but it just goes to show that if you can find the enjoyment in the process and you can do all of that, like what you can achieve on the long end is it's literally limitless because it's the process of learning to be consistently good rather than occasionally great, which is going to serve you in the long run. Um, and I suppose it links into the planning and making sure that you have a plan to be able to follow, because if you're not following a plan, then you can't follow that process and you won't see the little micro wins that do eventually compound to that kind of bigger win. But then you have to understand and learn what's got you there. It's taking those daily non-negotiables, it's having those hard conversations, it's going to bed when you need to, it's hitting your calories, it's just doing a little monotonous, the boring work that actually compounds that big, that bigger end goal. It's funny you say that actually, because if we use the marathon as, a, as an example, like I got the exact opposite of that, but I'm aware of what, why that was, is because probably my most productive run of training was when we got to Lisbon, <laughs> because because I was training with you, <laughs> you know, you're, you're currently tapering, we're just in your fatigue, you know, um, like I, like hands up, I still don't enjoy running at all. I set the goal of of, of kind of running a marathon because it was completely out of my comfort zone, um, and I committed mentally to the to the fact that regardless of what happens, I will go and do it. You know, um, what I hadn't done is commit to what I said. Go without a plan is just a wish. You know, I hadn't committed like mentally to doing every single thing that I needed to to get the most out of that performance. So therefore, that was reflected in in terms of the fact that like. I dragged myself over that finish line. To be fair, I still looked good when I done it. You know, um, I, was, I was I was impressed. Bear in mind, the longest run you'd done was what twenty half mar- half marathon, yeah. Half like, marathon. So, <laughs> literally, it was a it was a double length PB. But um, it was better than but, me. But, but, finish line. <laughs> but but one of the one of the things that that I kind of found with that is like I get a lot out of like quote unquote competing, like, and I. I, I really forgot about that when I was training for the marathon because I'd never I'd never done it like you know in that kind of you know the event based uh, side of things and it wasn't until I'd done that that I kind of clicked to, to that was what got me hooked on powerlifting for so long was like the training's fucking hard like you you go through the motions you've got heavy weight on your back you're fucking your eyes look like they're about to bulge out of your head when you're squatting you know um and you do that week on week week on week months for years but every so often you get those little glory moments of competing, you know, and you, you can see them as markers for you to actually objectively improve. And 
that's actually what's quite rewarding is just seeing yourself improve over time. But the event itself is the more enjoyable part of it for, well, was for me. And I forgot about that in terms of the training side of things. Like, um, so with running, all I was seeing was like, I was you know, seeing numbers improve on my watch and stuff like that, but I wasn't really getting like, I, I wasn't getting the same like oomph or the same satisfaction that I get when I would see a PB on a squat or whatever, right? And then it wasn't until the marathon where like, I was running, I'd done the half and I got a PB on the half uh, quite considerably because I probably had a good, really good stint of training for you know, two, two and a bit weeks prior to it with you. Um, but it was at that point where I kind of, I was like, fuck, this is actually really enjoyable. This whole event is enjoyable, you know, and that's kind of made me realize was like, actually, if you're going to set if you're going to set some goals for next year, that even if they're fitness related, have some celebration points built into them, you know? Um, and it's something that we do with our clients. Like whenever they're finishing a fat loss journey, like a lot of our clients do photo shoots. And the, the, the goal wasn't to do the photo shoot. The goal was to get you in the best shape of your life. And you just use that photo shoot as a celebration point, you know? Um, and it's something that I kind of hadn't really realized because if I was just to go knock out that, marathon you know in a canal in glasgow somewhere that just wouldn't be as enjoyable as a, an event of making that celebration of going to lisbon with a great mate you know spending a month there and fucking and doing a really good marathon and in a great environment not that everybody needs to do that just to to, to do a fitness goal but it, it made me realize that if i can kind of create almost a celebration point for achieving that goal then it's going to be a much more enjoyable process of doing the work as well you know so, uh, yeah. That links incredibly well into like one of my biggest lessons. And um, I think we've spoken about this and it's just how, well, just to turn it back a sec, I think setting time bound goals with events and things like that, it gives you a serious a level of accountability. Like accountability is everything. You could have the most perfect plan, goal, whatever it might be. If you don't have some form of accountability and you don't follow through on the process and the plan, you will never achieve that goal. Yeah. No, that's why photo shoots are so powerful. Events such as marathons, Ironmans, triathlons, whatever it might be, that's why they are so powerful, even a hot, even a holiday for some people and things like that. Um, but I think one of the reasons that the marathon w was uh, such an enjoy enjoyable experience, and even like for me, the, la the last 12 weeks of traveling and things like that, I think this year has made me realize how much success is a game played in numbers. Mm. So there's no way, and I think you shared it on your story, I did that really and you shared and I was like, fuck, that is gold. And it's, if we'd just gone and run that marathon on our own, it would have been nowhere near as much. But being able to celebrate the wins and seeing yourself and Lewis cross the finish line yeah. and seeing <laughs> Lewis having a bit of a mo moment after and things like that, and then sitting down <laughs> and having a, having, a, having a beer afterwards and things like that, like that, I think that is the biggest thing that does make it incredible is actually being able to celebrate those wins with people. Because I was used to massively, mate. Like if 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 you if you think back about all the kind of best times and the worst times in your life, like almost all of them are down to a relationship with someone else, you know. And that is something that if you if you understand that, you can place that in the best light and say, right, okay, I'm going to build these events and and kind of celebrate this with someone else, and it will mean so much more to you, you know. Um, because that was definitely the, like, I remember I <laughs> sent you that video. It was like, uh. I think it was the first attempt to do a half marathon and it was absolutely slating down in, uh, in Glasgow. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's great to train for a marathon in Scotland, mate. I'll paint a picture for everybody here. Kev sends me this video on Instagram. And this, this big Scottish dude with this beard and he literally looked like a drowned rat. Like you can hardly <laughs> see him. It was raining that heavy. All I could hear was just wet squelch, wet squelch as he's running. Oh my God, it was... Dude, I was doing fucking hurdles. Like, I was jumping over puddles. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a half marathon hurdle race. I was like, oh, this is fun. Um, but yeah, I, I have no, absolutely no idea where I was going with that point. But the 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 kind of, the, the point is, uh, yeah, go back to it, was that, like, that was, as I was doing that, I was kind of laughing to myself about knowing that I was going to be sending you this video of me running in this fucking horizontal rain knowing full well that you are going to probably have blue skies while you're training <laughs> nice scenic coast and uh and that made it easier because i had someone to kind of laugh about the good moments but also laugh about the tough parts you know and and that made a massive massive difference to you know i'm, I'm joking about not doing the training for it but like you know i still did i just i didn't tick every single box that i would have felt like I'd, I'd been actually enthused to achieve the goal you know it was it was more just something to keep me ticking over 
um but like having having that community and even it, it, it kind of doubled up when lewis got involved as well you know is like actually having somebody to to kind of be able to bounce the good and the bad off but it can help pull you out of any low moments that you might be having with anything because no no goal no journey is going to be it's like it's like that whole thing everyone says you can get a from a to b in a straight line you don't realize you have to do 75 bat flips and go around go around three roundabouts at the same time on your head doing handstand walks like that that is how you get to a goal and just having people to those sparring partners to sometimes they might have to put an arm around you sometimes they might have to give you a fist bump sometimes they might have to call you out and give you a kick up the ass um but having that around you it just makes it so much more fulfilling makes it so much more enjoyable and it actually gives you a, a bit of a bigger purpose as well because yeah. hey if you'd gone to lisbon and not run that marathon well i, well, I wouldn't have let you not run that marathon for one <laughs> but like it gives you so many different forms of accountability. It's just genuinely priced. Well, you this might... is the, this is what we said after it. Like the again, I suppose doing these kind of things is, uh, and we kind of touched on like the training being that catalyst for self improvement and and kind of self understanding is that when it came to actual race day, I had absolutely zero doubt that I was going to finish it because like that old feeling of this is the event, this is like competing, like I'm going to give everything that I've got here, that came back straight away. And it was almost that reminder of like, ah, you almost forgot how fucking stubborn you are. <laughs> like, and that's what we said at the end, like regardless of whether like it was going to be a good performance or if I was, <laughs> you know, that guy that we seen that was basically wrapped in a tinfoil blanket looking like a little, uh, a little burrito. <laughs> um, I was like, whether I'm going to end up in that state or whether I'm going to cross the line, you know, chest high, uh, it doesn't matter. The point is that I'm going to give absolutely everything. And I, 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 it was it was only through that event that I remembered that actually that's that's kind of the way that I am with most things, you know, because um, you don't you don't challenge yourself that much every single day, you know. Like we we get small challenges, but it's it's only when you really push to these kind of bigger events that you actually start to find these corners of yourself that you're like, ah, right, okay. It's been a while since I've seen this, you know. Hello, my old friend. <laughs> yeah, and um, and that's the thing. It's like I, that's why I think both of us have already kind of set up milestones for every single quarter of next year, and 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 in terms of fitness goals, in terms of personal goals, in terms of business goals, because it's like these things remind you of of the aspects that you kind of need to work on, you know, and and they force growth and much more than what. And much more than what the just the objective goal actually builds or look or surface level looks like, you know. I think that that almost for, forced evolution is such a such an incredible phrase because so many people have ideas and things, set a goal, and get it done. Like yeah. we we set the marathon by no means were we anywhere near ready or even in like the state to run a marathon when we signed up, but. Dude, yeah. the conversation of that marathon came off the back of you pacing me for. Uh, I think it was a, a 1k run. <laughs> it paced me for a 1k run and uh, I looked like I had a severe case of hay fever for the rest of the day. I was fucked. <laughs> uh, to put this into perspective, like you had been training, you'd been running quite a lot and I just thought I was like, right, Simon, pace me for a run and uh, and you paced me to them much quicker than I'd ever ran before. Um, hit some sort of PB on just at a sheer, sheer competitiveness yeah. and uh and then it was like, yeah, we should probably do a marathon. Like, let's just take that goal that you've just done there and times it by 40 something. You know? <laughs> um, but the thing is though, it did it like it, it made us have something to focus on and, and kind of and move towards and, and created growth, you know. Yeah, yeah, this is true. For example, yeah, yesterday I hit a hit my squat and you, you responded to my story. I was like, yeah, there's something big big coming this year. And in my head, I've got like 235. What did Kev say? Kev went 250. Oh, stretch goal 260. I was like, motherfucker, now I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Mate. No, this squat's 235. Like, that's not an interesting number. You know, 230 minimum and then 260 because it looks beautiful on a bar. Um, big play. There it is. But the, I think, like, I suppose to, to kind of take it off the back of that, that, and to double down on the environment side of things. Like I've had a good think about that because obviously we are, you know, we're planning on kicking off traveling together in, in January. And 
the environment itself is going to change so much, like month on month, uh, quarter on quarter next year, because we're moving to different locations. But the two things that I've kind of realized is, is what I actually need from my environment is access to small things in every single day that allow me to feel good and the people around me as well. And that, so it doesn't need to be, you know, fucking a beachfront in Dubai. It doesn't equally doesn't need to be, you know, some swanky hotel that we're staying in or, you know, like, you know, surrounded by people in a mastermind or anything. I don't need that. But what, what I do need is one or two sparring partners in terms of sharpening the sword. Um, from a business point of view, that doesn't need to be, it's, it's much better. I'm going to realise this, it's much better when they're in person because like the amount, the amount of work that we got done and the amount of progress that we both made in, in Lisbon was unreal because we were just consistently beside each other. Um, but the the kind of small things within your daily routine make just as much of a difference to me. Like, you know, being able to, to go for a walk in the morning, clear my head in a, in a decent spot, grab one of these, or even just go to a nice coffee shop. You know, um, that means a lot to me um, to be able to train in quite a nice gym. I've realized again, makes a massive, massive difference to, to both my enjoyment of training, but also my headspace, you know? Um, and that was like, both of us uh, had a bit of a hard on for that, that gym in Lisbon, you know? Um, and and it, after training in small hotel gyms and like kind of pure gyms and stuff like that, it reminded me of like, actually when I made my best progress, it was in that environment. So it's just like small things every single day is like learning what, what allows me to enjoy most of the day. And it is small things, training in a good gym, grabbing a good coffee, having a good chin wag with, with somebody that, that I like, you know, um, that, that ticks the boxes for me. Simple man, but, <laughs> but uh, you know. I'm exactly the same. There's another another one which we spoke about, which is actually, actually an interest, I think might be interesting people to hear, because when we were staying in Lisbon, we ended up staying in the hostel, which had rooms and things like that. So we didn't have a lounge or a kitchen or anything like that. And we both said that we kind of felt like we just hadn't stopped. Because quite often yeah. Sit on the sofa, mong out, watch TV or something like that. And although we went down, went down to beach run, sat and watched the sunset, whatever, but it wasn't just like it's sort of a bit weird. Like you, you couldn't just be a slob kind of vibe. Like you couldn't yeah, just yeah, 100%. Put your shoes off. So I think that that's another big one for me. It's just somewhere where you can just feel completely relaxed. Um, mm. and I don't like you don't I don't like doing that like where you're sleeping and things like otherwise like it starts affecting sleep and things like that. So that's another one. Is I think this is one of the reasons why. Well, you think we met each other in Dubai and in three days we ended up sharing a hotel room. <laughs> Didn't even buy me dinner. <laughs> yeah. like, we we, tra- we, we stayed, stayed in Dubai for a month, obviously stayed in Lisbon for a month and it's been pretty pretty plain sailing um, because yeah. I think a lot of those morals and kind of what we need in our environment are pretty simple. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And it's, that's a really good point, actually, because um, without... I know it makes it's such a small thing but when we when we shared that apartment together in Dubai we did have that space to to chill it we also had a, a a bigger circle of people around us that that kind of forced us to go and do more social side of things um which I think both put together actually meant that after that month in Dubai whilst we got a lot done being around each other we also I also felt a lot more chilled than when I left Lisbon like, because when we left Lisbon, I felt like both of us just kind of actually almost bunt each other out with just like, go, 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 you know? Um, whereas it makes such a, it's such a small, silly thing to have, but just having a couch to just veg out and watch a movie, you know, like me, you and Jade were just like feet up watching some movie with the Cheesecake Factory stuff delivered, you know, like, um, Maybe. <laughs> you know, that, that made, that did make a difference. In it, and that was like, coming back to it, that is just creating some sort of environment to get what you need out of it. You know, when we when we done it was not through our own choice. It was I think it was like the fourth place that we tried to rent in Lisbon. Um, fuck, that's a rabbit hole for another day to talk about that story. But um, but obviously we didn't have that place that we could just chill out. So it was like your room, and then we were either out at the gym, out at work in the co-working space, or we were out for for dinner. You know, so like those conversations that you're having in those kind of environments just weren't as chilled. So it just kind of felt like you know, go go go, brains always on. One thing we need to be careful of in Daniel because we did it in Dubai. We literally two weeks we went absolute ham, got so much done. And then we were both like, why do I feel so fucked? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like I've come in kind of lying on the sofa with a dairy milk lying on the sofa next to me. I've 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 gone out at 10 o'clock and I've just got a message, you're getting slutty. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting ice cream. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's, um, I think that's one of the, 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 the good balances, though, with uh, the, this structure, again, that we've got going forward for, from January onwards, is that it's me, you, Jade, and Alex. And like, Alex is pretty good at just being able to fucking disconnect and, 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 and like, actually instigate some sort of good socialising, you know? Um, and that's a, that's a massive... It's going to be a massive asset with it, you know? Um, as long as him and Jade don't kill each other. <laughs> I think I'm going to fall out with Marco. I still can't believe he hasn't turned up. Motherfucker. Um, but yeah, I suppose, if you, is there any other kind of less, like final kind of wrapping up lessons that you've got for the year? Um, two, they kind of go part in part is one, you're, you're always going to be your own worst critic. And then also you can't keep everybody happy. Yeah, that's a big one, actually. That's a yeah. big one. It's funny, actually, because... Um, like as a team, we've got some younger coaches, and like not not younger, just and younger in terms of experience with coaching. And it's it's I don't know if the word's fun, but it's definitely interesting to see them go through what I remember at the time was like when you're pouring your heart and soul into trying to help somebody change, and they're maybe just not ready for it at that time. And it you know that that friction creates just like a very it's a very tough place to be as a coach. You know, and and that's. It's, I think it's a very very good thing to see some of my team take it so personally, because I'm like that. That is that aspect that really makes you give everything of yourself to your coaching. But as you become a more experienced coach, you can spot these signs for when some when you need to double down on somebody because they're actually just going through a tough time, or when actually they're just not in the position of their. And in, in, in the life at that moment to be able to actually pursue what they're doing or, or what they're telling you they want, you know, um, and that, that that is a big thing. It's like it's, it's kind of learning that you can't please or help everybody. I think it goes for personal life and talking about that environment as well. Is you don't yeah, you, no no one should bend over backwards to try and keep someone happy, and if you do, then maybe potentially someone who you need to think should this person be in my circle because otherwise. You just end up eating so much of your energy, your bandwidth, and it's just good for no one because yes. it's just a, just a complete waste. And then the whole, kind of being your own worst critic was a big one for me because I always put so much pressure on myself, so much pressure. Um, I used to think that I had to achieve goals that I had. Like I had goals for when I was 30, and I was like, no, you need to do next year. Like, but that it is, uh, I suppose, I suppose another lesson is that that can serve you in some ways incredibly well, but it can also massively hold you back and can just set you up to not necessarily be in the best place mentally because you are if you don't achieve it it's either if you are, if you do it's amazing if you don't it's like the world's fucking ended because you're putting so much pressure for this one one goal whatever it might be physique performance personal professional just remember you will be your own worst critic and if you bounce goals off people people will tell you if it's realistic or not as well as a, another thing for environment yeah 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 100 percent um that's i suppose that's something that i can uh like took this year is, is understanding my own internal drive as well um because like you said like you you can be your own worst critic and you're like you need to what was this i, I had this one down as a question for you <laughs> um yeah well that's good minds man good minds but it's like understanding your own internal drive because like that pressure that you're putting on yourself that comes from somewhere you know um and i quickly noticed that there was almost a, this kind of light switch with me. Um, like I've I've kind of built up a personal training business multiple times in different cities. So, you know, like came back from uni, moved from Edinburgh to Glasgow, built up my first like on the gym floor PT business. Um, like just obsessed, you know, obsessed with it, loved it. Like young, young, early twenties, like just keen to get involved. Um, I found my limits with that burnt out a little bit and I kind of realized that you probably shouldn't be doing like 14 to 16 sessions a day it's not it's not enjoyable um but then kind of moved to London done well there moved back rebuilt in Glasgow moved to another gym in Glasgow because it was a better better place that opened up so I built multiple different things and then done it online but every single time there's been this element of like like a switch and I can feel the difference in terms of that drive and it's taken me to to this year to really question what that was, because I think again, it's it's probably conversations with Kieran. Like you just ask you questions that you've like never really 
confronted with yourself before um, and, and kind of puts it in a conversation that makes makes it easy for you to come to the understanding yourself. And one of the things that I kind of found was that whenever I was starting something, there was that hustle, you know, there was that almost enjoyment element of like, I'm starting something new, there's like, let's grind, like insert any fucking BS, like quote you want to do, but it was like, you know, I was, I was naturally more hungry for it. And then I got to a, a certain level of success with it. And then that natural hunger wasn't there anymore. And it's taken me to this year to kind of realize that actually the reason for that is potentially my upbringing in the terms of like that natural hunger comes through a scarcity mindset of like if I don't do this work right now I potentially might not be eating or I might not be able to pay my rent or whatever like that natural mindset but then whenever I got to a point and it's like I'm not massively materialistically driven or anything like that there's certain things that I like but you know for me it was like can I can I take my partner out to for, for a nice meal and not sweat the bill you know can I go out with mates and and you know get a, get a taxi up the road without looking at the meter you know like you know the, like small things like not stressing certain like financial things but then when I got to this point like when I got to that point I was like well, where, where's the next step like I've never really had any incentive to get beyond that because I've not needed it I've not I'm almost not had to think about it you know, um, and it, it was it wasn't until this year where we, we kind of got to that point and I was realizing that actually I love that feeling of that natural hunger of like, like, let's hustle, let's let's get some work. But the internal incentive there wasn't there. So therefore, I was like, this feels different and I need to I need to understand how to bring that back to some element. And for me, it's just actually actually connecting it to something that's bigger than myself, you know, and like you know, it may be it may be awesome that I can go and eat at some restaurant, but there's there's bigger elements to the work that if I if I if I grow recomp bigger than what it is just now, that actually I can start to impact a lot more lives in a, a much more positive way, um, and that th doing that work to to make that more significant connection to outside of just me has has been fucking game changing for me. You know, um, yeah, I, I hit that exact point in May. It's where you're uncomfortably comfortable. It's where you're yeah. like, hey, like life's life's pretty good. I can kind of do what I want, when I want, with who I want. And maybe maybe you're traveling, you've got a nice house, whatever it might be. But you're like, I want more. You're like, I'm yeah. not where I want to be. I know I've got more to give. But if you try and force that, and you keep operating out of that kind of scarcity place you're talking about, kind of running away from pain. So for my, mine was all, I didn't feel like I ever fitted in as a kid. So my way of doing that was just becoming the best. I became the be best, mm -hmm. became the best rugby player, became the best whatever it was, because everyone likes one person who's the best. Yeah, you always get picked first, don't you? You always get picked first. So that was my way of doing it. But when you get to the place where you're doing pretty well, that doesn't serve you anymore. And then when you have to force it, you, 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 you can't force yourself to that next level. You have to be operating at a place of like interest, curiosity, what's next, rather than fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you almost. Because that's basically yeah. what you are operating out of. And it is that hustle, but that will only ever serve you so far. And that flipping that switch, like for me, it has been able to genuinely help and inspire any kids who might have felt like I felt when I was younger to say, you don't have to feel like that. Like, it's okay to be slightly different. It might be okay to be weird. You don't have to take a traditional route through education, whatever it might be. Because if you put your mind to it, you stand around yourself with the right people and you're willing to do the work. What you could achieve will generally blow your mind. Because... Yeah. We've both spoken about this. If people had turned around and said to us a year ago, two years ago, we'd be doing what we're doing now, literally laughing in your face and going, hey, nice one. <laughs> like, it's so true. It's so true. But yeah, I think that that's, you know, I mean, I think we had this conversation in, in Lisbon in, in, in the terms that you know, this progress that you make through your training, whether it be your physique, whether it be your strength, it does become the catalyst for progress in every aspect of your life, you know, because you, you understand that setting goals and, and doing the work to be able to take them off it looks different in application but it's very very applicable to every aspect of your life and it's that it teaches that's you, it teaches you delay gratification which i think yeah. these days is. i mean it takes you so much more as well doesn't it but it's like it's one of those ones that that me understanding that and that's essentially what i'm passing on for people is is massive you know and there's a load of, load of other different connections that i've made as well you know like um I've now been able to give my partner a, a completely new career that she's much more satisfied in. Um, you know, 
uh, one of my coaches has uh, got his first house and his first kid who is an absolute sweetheart and like you know see, seeing these and seeing like their success is actually going to be like impacted by my success as well it's just giving me so many more connections to go right well beyond that scarcity side of things things are uncomfortably comfortable but now you've got a reason to start to push that you know you can you can show if we can't grow a lot bigger you can show so many more people the power of like progress in this format and how it will start to impact other aspects of your life and you'll also be able to create a life for not just yourself that you want but those that are in your really close circle you know the guys that you actually love you know and that's it's diff- it feels different. It's still, it doesn't feel like that same, like, get up, hustle, like, you know, like, bills are need to be paid. But it, it feels more powerful, you know, and, and it's taken me to, you know, it almost sounds selfish to say that, but it's taken me to to this time to actually really understand that that's much more powerful for a driver to, to, to be doing things for other people in that aspect, you know. One thing to understand where your drive comes from it's another thing to start to make the shift and mentally start to understand it. Then it's another thing to actually be able to like accept it and like embody it. Yeah. I think we're, I think we're probably both at that similar place where we started to understand where that drive was from and where we needed to go, but to actually in, like embody it and start operating and acting out of that place of like, this is where we're going and this is why we're go- doing this and actually kind of get rid of that scarcity side of things. It, I think it does take time and that, that's what makes me excited it's obviously I'm, I'm similar like my sister now works with me my sister's boyfriend works with me one of my best mates um it's incredible do you feel pressure now having your partner <laughs> things like that massive massive amount um it's funny actually like the we were you weren't here yet but we were staying at that in fact actually you might have been i'm not too sure we stayed in that same apartment like twice in, in dubai so um and that same building sorry um but one, one of the times when I was staying there, uh, <laughs> one of our coaches, James, messaged me uh, and he was like, uh, we'd had a massive influx of clients going through the door. Things were going really, really well. And he messaged me like, really short message was like, Kev, um, I know that we've got a lot of people coming through the door just now, but can you not send any clients my way? Um, I need a couple of days and it's not like them at all. So I was like, right, fuck, <laughs> what's going on? And uh so I was really nervous. I was like, hey, dude, uh, obviously not as like the boss, but let me know if there's anything else, you know, like as your mate, is, if there's anything else that's going on, like, can I help you with anything? And he's like, yeah, I just need a couple of days to get my head straight, mate. And I was like, right, okay, what's going on? <laughs> and uh, and it was literally like two days later, he's like, uh, are you free for a call? So I'm thinking, right, oh man, something, something's happened to you, like something really bad. And uh, so I grabs a FaceTime with him and uh, he's like, uh, where's Jade? I was like, okay, that's a bit, bit of an odd question, but uh, I'm pretty sure she's like just coming down, like downstairs, we're go- just going for a walk. And um, so I grabbed a seat and I was like, what's up? And he's like, uh, how do you feel about being an uncle? <laughs> and he's like, I was like, you motherfucker, the last two two days, like I've been, I've been sitting here thinking that, you know, something really bad's happened. And it turns out he just got the news, like it, it was a surprise to both of them that, you know, that they're about to have a kid. And um Outside of all that being absolutely fantastic, like restrictions were still in place, you know, like working on the gym floor wasn't, you know, wasn't at its full capacity. And so his main source of income was like working with Rico. And I was like, right, shit, I've now got a kid on the way. I was like, that's that's actually like, we can't fuck about now. Like you, this has to be, you know, um, it's, it's not just, it's not just my mouth that I'm feeding now, you know? Um, so I was like, right, we need to get to work. and. It's like, I spoke to Kieran about this, but it was something that like I was putting almost unnecessary pressure based on like scenarios that I was creating in my head. You know, like if every client I, we've ever worked with just decided to leave in one day, you know, <laughs> which is never going to happen. You know, we're providing a great service and, and things are only moving in the right direction. And, and everything that we've ever done has shown that things are going to continue to move in the right direction. So it's like, why are you thinking like that? But you do put that pressure on yourself, don't you? And it was the same when, when I asked uh, Jade to, to come on board. She was leaving a very secure job in the NHS, you know, as a biomedical scientist, a very respected career. And I'm just like this dude who's, you know, <laughs> seen a bit of success with his own business. Yeah, we're sat in coffee shops and we're still operating this business at my parents' house. <laughs> yeah, you, you but, know what I mean? Like, so. Yeah, it's... uh. 
yeah, it, it's a strange pressure. But uh, again, like you being your own worst critic, like it, you, the scenario is always so much worse in your head. When you get it out of your head and you speak to someone about it, speak to Kieran, whoever it might be, we've all got people who you can speak to about the, the, this stuff. Just get it out of your head because you yeah. will make the worst scenario situation that you possibly can in there. And that's good for no one because then you're just going to be operating out of a place of even more fear and it's just not, not, not going to serve you. Um, so, dude, I want to I wrap this up. I've got one more, one more question um, for you. Because otherwise, smirk on your face, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that question. Um, what's one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Oh shit, that's quite, That's a hard one to sum up in one piece of advice, isn't it? Um. Oh fuck. I'll probably come back to you with this off the podcast in terms of like in a week's time when some real penny of wisdom's dropped to me. You know what I'm like, I take a I take a long time to actually think things through. But honestly, I'd probably say like the way I'm feeling right now in comparison to you know, Kev at 19. It fucking works out, you know, like genuinely it works out. And as long as you're willing to embrace putting the work in and enjoying both the highs and lows of that the journey is going to be very very fruitful and you know i'm not meaning that in a you know a financial way or anything like that it's more just the fact that like personal development is just on like these last 10 years have been a fucking fun ride you know um and almost everything that i've set my mind to has never worked out the way that i thought it was but it has worked out anyway it's very very similar to mine my, my biggest thing is just chill out dude it's all going to be okay Hundred <laughs> percent. Stop, stop putting so much pressure on yourself. Stop thinking everything have, have, have to happen tomorrow. Just keep ticking your boxes. Enjoy the ride because I think so many people can fall into the trap of saying, "I'll be happy when I'll do mm. it when," rather than just actually living. Like th th this last year, this year is generally probably one of the first times like, I've generally felt like I've been the happiest person that I've ever been. I've been the most enjoyable that uh, that like year that I've ever had. Um, I don't mean this to be like a poop on because I know COVID is, and the whole last year has been horrendous for a lot of people, but I've been in a very lucky situation. This has generally been the best year of my life. And that's because yeah. I haven't put so much pressure on myself. I've generally been like, it's all going to happen, but I'm going to make sure I enjoy it when I do it. I'm going to enjoy it now rather than yeah. later. Down it's funny, man. It's like both you and Alex sent me these uh, reels, or like tag me in these reels of like your kind of highlights of 2021. And it was like, when I look back on it, there's so many of them like, the prop the ones that got me in right in the feels was like was just stupid moments man like i was i was doing i was doing one the other day and it was like me and alex were on um like some obstacle course on the jpr you know that inflatable obstacle course <laughs> it's just this it's like this clip of me trying to do it and obviously alex being an ex-gymnast is oh, like yeah. <laughs> yeah as athletic as they come and uh yeah life life note don't do an obstacle course with an ex-gymnast <laughs> but the point is like like all these kind of small moments were just like little snippets of us just being fucking present and actually having a little bit of fun at the time. So this is something that I'm really looking forward to for, for 2022 for, for all of us is just creating some class memories, you know, um, and, and growing at the same time and not just focusing on growth, growth, growth. It's like, we'll actually just be present. And that kind of brings me on to like today and this afternoon, um, you know, I've booked a cabin for, for, the next two days for me and uh like six of us are heading up and we're literally like laptops not getting taken with me it's getting shut down and i'm unwinding for two days with you know five of my kind of favorite people so it's just class it's been an absolute pleasure and i hope you have an incredible time at the cabin i will probably see and hear from you in a couple of days in 2022 and just want to remind everyone where they can find you obviously i'll leave the tags in the show notes yeah 100 percent uh Best place to find me on Instagram. That's where I'm you know, most present. So recomp underscore online. Super simple. Easy as that. Cheers, mate. And have uh, have a good one, okay? Bye-bye. Have a better one.